Databases are really complicated. And one of the worst part about databases is changing columns and changing rows, schemas, etc. But this tool right here called Atlas is uh, written in Go. So shout out to all the gophers out there. And it manages your database schema as code, almost like it's like Terraform or something similar like that. Now, the reason I found this is because I was looking for an alternative to Alembic for uh, SQL Alchemy. Don't worry, folks, I'm not gonna be talking about Python for long. I'm used to Django's easy migration system where you just write your model and you know schema code that you know looks like this, where it has all the relationships, it has all the fields, and then you just run one simple command and it does all of that for you. Make code, run my migrations, bam, just relax and move on. And sadly, I'm no longer using Django and Alembic with uh, SQL Alchemy was just a little bit more complicated and required a bit of setup. And that's when I found Atlas and I found out that it had a SQL Alchemy support, which is actually brand new, by the way, January 9th, 2024. So put your production database to brand new software here, people. <laughs> Coding with Lewis support set. Looking through the documentation, I was genuinely surprised at how little stars it has as well as just how little people are talking about this. It has a lot of features just packed in. Anyway, let me give you a surface level of how this works and how you can implement it in your workflow. So just starting from scratch here in PyCharm, and this literally works anywhere, by the way. Sorry for showing my Python again. Installation is pretty straightforward. <laughs> I, I tweeted this the other week, but there's never any Windows, dedicated Windows installations anymore. They always just tell you to use Docker or like NPM or something. Like, come on, I don't have to use WSL for everything, do I? Now, one of the very first features we're gonna talk about here is called Schema Inspect. And what this does is it kind of helps you if you have a database somewhere else and you wanna bring it into your environment that you're in right now. You can inspect it. Do you get it? So this is what this schema code would be right here. You would put Atlas schema uh, inspect, and then you would just put your Postgres or MySQL string. This is the password right here. So good luck, it's deleted by now, nice try. And then you would wanna put it into this HCL file that would be right here. So schema HCL, wait, did it work? <laughs> Look at that, it just told me to update. Great. Sorry about that. I went to sleep. It was like midnight when I record last. So where were we? So yeah, you can see right here, I have a bunch of columns in my table right here. So foreign key, table, all of this is being defined within this HCL file right here, the atlas dot, or no, sorry, the schema dot HCL. And yeah, it, it does kind of look like a Terraform file if you've ever used Terraform before. No, personally, not a big fan of it, but um, there's alternatives here I'll show you in a bit here. So say we want to change something in the schema, like make something uh, like add a column or something. Well, it's just easy as changing the, you know, thing here. We'll just add a column and say, you know, Lewis is cool. Null equals true, there we go. Holy crap, had a little bit of a thing there. Type equals Boolean. Simple as that, obviously. Then here's what we do when we want to be able to change this and put it into our database. So I didn't show this step right here, but essentially you can choose if you want to just kind of push directly where uh, to the database where it just all it does is sync with the schema file. Or if you're looking to do a version control way, which is kind of like what I do, you can have like a migrations folder right here where it can like hold all of the, the information about your database. If you're used to kind of like database migration software, it's nothing new. So then you run the command atlas schema diff and then uh, call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna say add Lewis is, oh, whoops, no, sorry. I'm just gonna say added new call or something like that. And then you specify the, dire uh, the directory where your migrations is, which right here, the file of where your schema is. So this is kind of like what you're determining where the schema is, like what the change is. And then this is actually kind of an interesting thing right here. It's the dev URL. So this is um, like a database that Atlas can use in order to test all of the migrations so that it doesn't crash in your production machine. So anyway, if I run this, what? What happened here? Unknown flag. All right, sorry. <laughs> I done goofed a little bit. So what it actually is, it's from and to. I um, The dir directory part comes in at another part. But basically you're saying, you know, from here, compare it to the schema HCL file, and then it will tell you uh, what it's doing. So here you can see alter table. Uh, this is the migration that it can do. So alter table public. 
courses. Add column, Lewis is cool, Boolean null. Wait a minute, I think I figured this out here. To, okay, you know what? I'm thinking that's what it is. It might be Atlas. Um, so here, let me go back to this. Okay, so is that it right there? I'm pretty sure that's it. And I'm just a gigantic idiot. Yep, <laughs> there we go right there. To recap, in order to migrate and get that new file, um, you use Atlas migrate diff instead of the schema, which yeah, I'm an idiot. But what this does is similar to what you're used to in like Django or any of these other migration tools that help you, you now have a list of different uh, migrations that help you be able to move on uh, to it. So it, it just makes it really easy. But the dev URL is basically an empty database that I can use in order to uh, run all these migrations through just to see if it's you know it validates and it works so oftentimes you can specify like you know a blank URL somewhere to uh, you know a cloud database but what you can do natively within it is it will have a docker container that it will just connect to automatically so for me it's Postgres 16 and it will just automatically be able to do it it's pretty great so then when it comes to putting this stuff into your database that's when we have this uh, apply tool come in. Similar to last time here, I'm just copying it off screen here. So what we have here is we have the Atlas migrate apply, and this is where we put the URL that we wanna do. So to me, this is, uh, you know, my database connection. Again, it's, it's down by the time this video is up, so don't even try. Then we specify the file migrations. And if this is like a first time database, uh, this is completely fine. Like you wouldn't need this next part, but because we inspected and grabbed uh, the schema that from a, database that already exists. This baseline is just us telling us like, hey, start from this specified migration right here. Don't apply it. We've already done it. So the issue I had and, you know, <laughs> I keep freaking doing this is I used the connection pooler instead of the regular uh, connection, which meant that I wasn't able to use this search path parameter. So yeah, that worked. <laughs> when you look right here, there is the migration all finished. So if I go over to the demo hour, let's go to this uh, pop SQL, you can see that under, what is it, courses here? Yeah, right here. Under Lewis is cool is now applied to our database. So just like that, it's easy to be able to go in and just change everything that we want to. Now, all of this is obviously pretty cool, um, but it kind of defeats the purpose in the first place of why you would even use a migration system like in Django or uh, any of these other programming languages. How can I access these database models in my code without having to use uh, SQL. Right now you can't do that, so how do you technically do that? For example, you have something that looks like this in your Python code, or maybe it's in Go, uh, Rust, whatever ORM you're using, you have something that looks like this because you can then go anywhere in your code and then reference it and then use it like it's a database object. And this is where Atlas might actually disappoint you a little bit, so make sure you check this before um, whatever your solution is here, I'll, I'll go over it right now. Here's all the different types of implementation. So you got uh, GoRM, <laughs> that's actually pretty clever, wow. Bego, I haven't heard this one actually. Used widely in the Go community, okay, wow. Hibernate, SQL, so they have all of these ones right here. So the reason I found it like at the beginning of the video was because it had uh, SQL Alchemy in there. And this was brand new at the time, so it's not like this is something that, you know, was there for a long time and they're not updating it. It seems like they're updating things so often. Like even when I go on their blog, they have like announcing V0.22, which is like, you know, a week ago from this video. Well, from when this was recorded. And they have like, you know, different features. If we go on here, they had Django support right there, which, came out just a couple months ago, which it looks like they skipped maybe a version here. And the way this works is that they create like little integrations within Python code, Go code, wherever your ORM is, and then is able to create an external schema from that. So it's kind of like translating all your code and then making it uh, in their style. So if your ORM is supported, I highly recommend doing this because you can switch places and in, in between different projects and it's, it's great. I don't think this video would come out before the meme generator video that I made, but in this, I have my SQL Alchemy database. Like I just have a meme entry with a bunch of things. Uh, I have my meme image, which is also there. And this is all gonna be open source anyway, so I'm gonna have all of these in the description anyway. But you can see that I have all of this stuff right here. And this software feels new because it seems like there's so much, but at the same time, so little. So for my case, for this AI meme, I needed a vector database. So I used uh, Neon, I believe it's called, with a Postgres vector da database. But 
they didn't have vector right out of the gate and it wouldn't somehow let me use a custom model even though I did try it and use it a couple times now. It's cool that they have this feature but it's not really documented anywhere especially considering how popular it is but you can see right here I have my Postgres database but I had to create my own custom image from it. Uh, because I needed to get that vector. So over here, I had the Docker file where Postgres is there. And it was a bit of a mess and a little bit of troubleshooting. But overall, I just really enjoy where this project is going. If you're ever looking to do something uh, with databases and you want to get away from what you use initially, uh, this is a great project and check it out if all those integrations are there for you. It's being updated a ton, so I highly recommend you check it out. It's really cool. Let me have a look here. Atlasgo.io. Yeah, it's pretty good.